Welcome to our channel. In today's video, we're diving into the top three toughest prisons in the United States. These notorious institutions are known for their harsh conditions, extreme security measures, and brutal environments. From the infamous history of San Quentin State Prison to the relentless regime at Folsom State Prison and the haunting legacy of Louisiana State Penitentiary, also known as Angola Prison, we'll explore what makes these prisons some of the most feared and formidable in the country. Get ready to uncover the chilling realities behind the walls of America's most notorious penitentiaries. Number one on our list is San Quentin Prison. Its dark past shows the harsh reality within its walls. Built during the California Gold Rush in the mid-19th century, it was meant to house criminals seeking fortune in the West. Over time, it became one of the most infamous maximum security prisons in the United States. The first execution at San Quentin happened in 1893, when a convicted murderer named Jose Gabriel was hanged. Hanging continued for many years, reminding everyone of the severe consequences of serious crimes. But as time went on, people began to question if hanging was a humane way to punish. In the mid-20th century, San Quentin switched to more modern execution methods. The gas chamber, using cyanide gas, replaced hanging. The first gas chamber execution took place in 1938 when a murderer named G. John was executed. This method was considered more humane but was still terrifying. Eventually the gas chamber was used less, and lethal injection became the preferred method. Introduced in the late 20th century, this involved giving the condemned a mix of drugs for a painless death. San Quentin was one of the first California prisons to use this method, further solidifying its fearsome reputation. One of the most notorious inmates at San Quentin was Charles Manson, a cult leader and serial killer. In 1969, Manson and his followers, called the Manson Family, committed several brutal murders, including the killing of actress Sharon Tate, who was eight months pregnant. San Quentin struggles with severe overcrowding, which worsens the harsh conditions. The prison was never designed for the number of inmates it currently holds. This leads to dire conditions, high tensions, and constant violence threats. The gymnasium, once for recreation, now serves as a dormitory with over 300 beds crammed into the space leaving little room for privacy. Sanitation is another major issue due to overcrowding. Maintaining cleanliness is difficult, and inmates have reported finding human feces on the walls. Racial tensions add to the prison's problems, with segregation common even in basic facilities like toilets and showers. Prison staff constantly move inmates around to prevent violence, creating instability and uncertainty. San Quentin also houses over 300 inmates on death row, some for decades. These inmates live in small cells with basic amenities like a bed, toilet, and sink. However, the isolation is severe. They spend most of their time in their cells, with little social interaction, which takes a heavy psychological toll. Living on death row means facing the reality of imminent execution daily. This leads to immense mental anguish and despair. Despite this, some inmates find ways to cope, turning to religion, spirituality, or creative pursuits like writing or art. In conclusion, life for death row inmates at San Quentin is marked by isolation, uncertainty, and the looming threat of execution. The prison stands as a grim reminder of the criminal justice system's harshness and its profound impact on those condemned to die. Number two on our list is Folsom State Prison. Entering Folsom State Prison immediately reveals its reputation as one of the toughest facilities in California. A recent tour by alumni from the FBI Citizens Academy highlighted the immense risks faced by correctional officers in this maximum security prison. Folsom State Prison houses around 4,000 felons and is divided into two sections, New Folsom, established in 1986, and Old Folsom, dating back to 1880. Both sections are fully operational, showcasing the prison's long-standing presence. The tour focused on New Folsom, 
a maximum security facility with a minimum security block. The prison offers a striking view of the Folsom Dam and Folsom Lake. Inspirational sayings for correctional officers line the road, reminding them of the challenges they face. The visitor's parking lot is next to the administration building, and near the baseball diamond are the minimum security facilities, housing inmates convicted of non-violent felonies with less than five years remaining on their sentences. Veteran guide Rhonda warned about the dangers of entering a maximum security prison, noting over 100 incidents since April 30th. Blocks B and C were on lockdown due to violent outbreaks, and Rhonda stressed that in a hostage situation, negotiations were off the table. In contrast, minimum security inmates have more freedom. They can work on the grounds, take classes, and pursue GED or AA degrees. They live in a dorm-like setting with rows of bunk beds and can purchase small appliances like mini refrigerators and clear plastic TVs. They eat in a cafeteria, unlike maximum security inmates who eat in their cells. The baseball diamond is a small semblance of normalcy for them. Approximately 40 men share an alcove in minimum security with only five feet of space between each bed. Despite the freedom to move around, their personal space is smaller than an average jail cell. Most inmates are young, with few over 30 years old, showing potential for rehabilitation if given the chance. However, cutbacks in parolee programs due to California's fiscal issues hinder their opportunities. Budget cuts have also affected staffing at Folsom. Walking through maximum security blocks A and B, it's clear that guard numbers have significantly reduced. On many floors only one correctional officer is present, while armed guards in towers monitor multiple areas. These cuts endanger both guards and prisoners. Despite cutbacks elsewhere, the legal department remains active as prisoners continue to file claims against the prison, many of which are frivolous, leading to significant expenses. Number 3. The Louisiana State Penitentiary, commonly known as Angola Prison, is the largest maximum security prison in the United States. Originally a plantation where slaves endured harsh conditions, the name Angola is believed to come from the African country from which many enslaved people were brought. The plantation spanned thousands of acres, using the labor of enslaved individuals to grow crops like cotton and sugarcane. Over time it was converted into a correctional facility, but the echoes of its past remain. Budget cuts once led to the firing of guards who helped prevent escapes, resulting in the controversial use of trained wolf-dog hybrids to fill the gap. Forced labor is a daily reality at Angola, reminiscent of its days as a plantation. The prison's extensive farm demands grueling work from inmates regardless of weather or their health. Under the scorching Louisiana sun, prisoners engage in back-breaking labor, often pushed to exhaustion. Medical care is frequently delayed or denied, leading to common injuries. Angola is also a breeding ground for violence. Inmates often attack each other, and guards have been reported abusing their power. Reports of rape and physical abuse by guards highlight the pervasive culture of violence. Annually, there are between 900 and 1,000 reported assaults involving both inmates and guards. The 1950s saw extreme brutality with guards given carte blanche to torture prisoners, leading to some inmates slashing their Achilles tendons in a desperate plea for help. The prison's history includes the use of the electric chair, known as Gruesome Gertie, which executed 86 inmates, often in bloody and prolonged ways due to malfunctions. This is a stark reminder of the prison's brutal past. Animals are not spared from cruelty either. The biannual Angola State Prison Rodeo, organized by inmates, treats both prisoners and animals as entertainment. Bulls are made more aggressive, causing severe injuries to prisoners. While the rodeo raises money for education, it does so at the cost of dignity and well-being. Recreation, crucial for mental health and rehabilitation, is severely restricted for death row inmates. They are allowed only one hour outside their cells each day to shower, briefly interact, or get a glimpse of the outdoors. 
The rest of their time is spent in small dimly lit cells with minimal human interaction, leading to severe psychological torment. The conditions on death row are designed to strip away comfort and normalcy, fostering an environment of despair. While lethal injection is now the method of execution, the prison's history with the electric chair is a chilling reminder of its brutal past. When an inmate dies at Angola, fellow prisoners craft a handmade coffin for their comrade, a small act of dignity in a place marked by cruelty and violence. Thank you for joining us on this winding journey through the dark corridors of human nature. We hope that by sharing this story, we can increase awareness and prevention. Remember to stay alert, stay informed, and most importantly, look out for each other. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and share to help us keep this important discussion alive. Until next time, stay safe.